All right, so now we are in our Azure DevOps service and today I'm gonna show you a first taste of how to work with the pipelines with the build. So I'm actually gonna create a very, very super simple build pipeline and I'm not gonna really tell you the details of the build pipelines because there are so many things to digest in this particular uh, build pipeline, something like agents, hosted agents, and self-hosted agents, and how, what is the build definition, and what are the different build steps that you can follow with different project templates and stuff. Those things we'll be discussing in our upcoming videos of this course. But as of now, I'm going to be creating the first ever pipeline in this particular course, which is the build pipeline. So as you can see, once I navigate to this particular build, I get this particular page saying there is no build pipelines found for this particular project because of course we don't have any pipeline yet for this particular project. So I'm gonna create a new pipeline here by hitting this new pipeline and I get what is called as this particular selection where it says that you're gonna choose the Azure DevOps, uh, Azure Repo Git or Bitbucket Cloud or from the GitHub or GitHub enterprise server or any other uh, git so you can see that these things actually have uh, a tag saying yaml there which is nothing but the modern way of configuring your pipelines or you can also go with the classical editor so if i select this classical editor you can see that this is the older version of visual studio team service where you can actually configure things so it's pretty much exactly the same thing even while azure devops service released yearly last year as a preview, they actually had only this kinds of options. They did not really had the options that we saw just now. So now everything has been moved to the, uh, to the newer way. So actually I'm gonna tell you how to work with the newer way first and then we'll jump into the classical way because many people still prefer to work with the classical way of working with it. So I'm just gonna create a new pipeline here and then you can see that it's gonna ask me where is your code? So if you remember, our code is actually sitting in this particular repository, which we worked in our previous video. So I'm actually gonna choose the Azure Repo Cloud. And you can see, ask me which project I'm gonna work with. Of course, it's Udemy course project. And this is the code that I'm gonna work with, the Udemy course project. So once I select this, you can see it's gonna ask me, configure your project. So basically it's now asking me what type of project is this and what is the thing that you're gonna choose to configure the execution of this particular code base. So I know that this is an ASP.NET code project and it is not even a full framework project. It's a complete .NET core project. I can select that. Or if your project, you think that it's gonna be a different project, something like Android and C, C++ or Go or Gradle, you can keep on choosing that. You can see that there are so many different programming language which has been supported by Azure DevOps service. So I'm actually going to choose the ASP.NET Core because I know that this is the language of my project so I'm just going to choose this guy and once I select this you can see that Azure DevOps service is super clever and it is automatically creating an AML file for me over here and it says that this is the trigger for the master branch and this is the pool you can see that this is something I have not even discussed and it's coming in. So just hold tight. We are going to be discussing about that. And this is the VM image or the virtual machine image, which is nothing but the Ubuntu latest. Again, where is this coming from? We'll be talking about that as well in our upcoming videos. And then this is the variable. It says build configuration as release. Where is this variable coming from? We'll be talking about that as well. And then there are some steps, something which, which says script as this, which is gonna be for the .NET build, and there is some build configuration. Again, what is this particular dollar of the build configuration? Pretty known variable, again. Uh, we can actually configure any number of variables we want. We can create custom variables as well, but as of now, these are the default variables which is available within Azure DevOps service. So this is what is this, right? So everything is in here. I'm just gonna save and run without changing anything here, and then I'm just gonna commit directly to the master branch cool and you can see that it is now committing to the master branch and it's gonna say uh, what are you gonna be doing so I'm just gonna say first execution so I have not made any changes here so uh, maybe the first execution of build makes more sense I'm just gonna save and run so this way it is gonna uh, add or commit uh, and uh, a change into the master branch as you can see there is this particular hash 
uh, and it is currently committing it and it has automatically got an agent and you can see that this agent that we're talking about is actually an agent which is hosted within the Microsoft server uh, and you can see what happened here for the checkout it actually checked out my code uh, from the particular source uh, which is nothing but the Azure Automation uh, Azure Auto at doazure.com which is cool from this particular project and it is now doing a .NET build release and you can see that the UI is pretty cool as well and it shows you what's really happening behind the scene you don't really have to refresh you can see the follow trail is uh, automatically selected and that's why the follow trail just shows you what's really happening behind the scene with our code execution and since this is an Ubuntu machine you can see the path of your code is actually a little bit different compared to Windows so if you are from Windows you probably see like C colon or maybe D colon something like that uh, those things are not here uh, all right it has been completed here which is cool so you can see the job has been finished and report the build status so you can see that the build status for commit is also been done and now if I go to the summary you can see that it shows me what other thing happened for the particular build it shows all the changes uh, over here and it shows the build pipeline succeeded which is pretty awesome so uh, there is no test for this particular uh, code yet we have to configure things uh, I have not did that and you can see that the log has been created pretty awesome as well so everything is working as expected so this is how we can actually create our first build pipeline using the Azure DevOps pipeline and now you can see like what are the things which has happened over here so I can directly go to the analytics you can see that if there is any pipeline failure is gonna show that to me or uh, if there is a test failure it's gonna show that to me and the durations and you can also queue new build from here if you want and you can add this to favorite if you want and all those stuffs so I can also do an edit uh, and then I can make the changes again this is exactly the same thing that we saw during the creation of the build pipeline and if you feel like you're gonna add some more steps here you can do that as well for instance if you want to uh, copy a file uh, from a folder that you are creating for instance if you go to the uh, to the build that we have over here and if I go to this particular build probably uh, I'm just gonna duplicate this particular tab because it's kind of very very important and if I go to the .NET build release here you can see this is actually sitting in the home VSTS of uh, slash one uh, of yes of the Selenium Selenium test and similarly the EA demo app so if for some reason I want to take this particular EA app of the CS project and then I want to do some stuffs here then probably what I can do is I can just do uh, a copy of this from here and then I can go to the uh, to the build and I'm gonna hit the edit and over here I can just say I need to perform a copy and you can see once I search for a task I can select uh, any one of the tasks that I'm looking for so I'm gonna copy a file of the source directory so basically the source directory I'm gonna be uh, copying is from the agent which is nothing but the agent uh, dot build directory I can do that as well slash I'm gonna paste this guy so it's gonna be like slash s so this is the folder slash ea app and probably I don't really uh, need to have this particular guy so once this is probably built it is gonna be sitting in the in the bin folder of the particular project so maybe I'm gonna say bin slash release slash netcore app 2.0 uh, so if I go over here let's see where is this building yep so it is gonna be in this particular place yeah uh, of netcore app 2.1 so it's not 2.0 so I'm gonna do that and then the target folder uh, is going to be the build artifact staging directory this is the where uh, this is the place where it's going to hold that particular stuff so I'm just going to be uh, doing that and I want to create a, a location maybe uh, as app directory or something like that 
So I'm just gonna add this and you can see that it creates a task for me over here and it says that this is the copy file target. So you can keep on adding all these stuff from here and then once you run this, it is gonna be creating a copy task and then you can also do a publish if you want and all those stuff from using this particular YAML file. So we'll be discussing about that in our next video but after that we'll be discussing about all these different concepts in much greater detail.